Welcome to another day in the matrix, waters above crypto, sending you all love and high vibrations. Over this past couple days in the market, we've seen a short-term bullish reversal for Bitcoin as we've anticipated for a while on this channel because of the bullish energy that typically surrounds a new moon. And yesterday we hit our first big resistance target between $41 and $42,000 Bitcoin, which happened approximately five days after the new moon. So far, using the moon cycles indicator has been an incredibly accurate hit rate, and it's just up to us and our patience to see how it all plays out. So in today's video, I'll be going over the Bitcoin and XRP charts and also discussing Bitcoin dominance and what we could expect for the altcoins as a whole moving forward. Also be doing a quick little decode using Gamatria for the summer solstice and our number 24 that we've been talking about all week because it's the 24th week of the year. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with the esoteric science of gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. If you haven't already subscribed and you like what we're doing here, feel free to subscribe. Give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious people to help grow this community. And for those of you that want to learn how to do technical analysis and combine it with gematria, you can join my mastermind course. There's a promo code in the pinned comment. You can qualify for the promo code discount by becoming a Patreon supporter of the Mastermind Community Membership. Link to my Patreon is in the description. And to get in contact with me for access to the course, my email is in the description box as well. And with that being said, let's take the red pill. So first things first, summer 24. For those of you that have been watching videos on this channel for the past couple weeks, you'll be seeing a lot of this number 24, and uh, it's just such a significant number, and it's been something that I've been really having fun decoding. This number 24 showing up in summer, and of course we're right around the corner into our summer solstice, and midsummer, which is being practiced on June 24th. Now this 24 number has been showing up a lot lately, and um, one thing that I think is interesting is our transition out of the 24th week of the year moves into midsummer, which will be on the 24th of June. And that day is a Thursday, Thursday, June 24th. Of course, Thursday is the day of Jupiter and the Jupiter Zodiac logo being the 24. Pretty incredible stuff. So 24s are everywhere, and this date is also the date of the next full moon. This next full moon being called the Strawberry Moon, so we'll talk about that in a moment as well. So this date being the date of the next full moon, and also it is the 174th day of the year. This 174 shows up in our favorite team, the New World Order. I'll show you that really quickly how that works. So I'm going to come over to here and I'm just going to pull from January 1st over to the 24th of June and you'll see we're getting 174. Okay, so this 174 number also shows up in something else that's quite important and that is cryptocurrency. Okay, so this 174 number is powerful. We're heading into the 174th day of the year, which just so happens to be the next full moon, which just so happens to be the start of midsummer on a Thursday, which is the day of Jupiter. Now, of course, cryptocurrency also has this 204, and in numerology, you'd be removing the zero and you get that 24. It's numbers everywhere. This next full moon also being the strawberry full moon, you can see right here, June 24th, and the time that it starts is 2.40 p.m. Hmm. <laughs> you can't escape this number. <laughs> so another thing is the term summer solstice. I thought this was really interesting. Summer solstice giving us a couple key numbers. I'll input this and of course we're getting the 56 and that 56 comes back to the society of Jesus. 
So the Society of Jesus with this 56, and you're also going to see a couple other numbers that match this. So we have right down here, you can see Society of Jesus 191, Summer Solstice 191, 56, 56, 187, and 187. Of course, 187 is a code. Talk about that in another video. I think that's really amazing that you're seeing that this <laughs> all aligns. And of course, the 6-5 date just passed about 11 days ago. It was the 5th of June. So that's another really um, interesting thing to see how the summer solstice in Gematria matches Society of Jesus in three out of the five ciphers that I typically like to use. Out of the four base ciphers, three are matching. And they're all matching in the same exact cipher. Hmm. And of course, we know that Midsummer is ritualized, pagan, etc. But it's, uh, it's, it's also really interesting to see how all these numbers align. And um, super fascinating. So one other thing that we could do is we could type in the date as such, June 20, 2021. Of course, this would be considered the summer solstice, transitioning into the 21st, the longest day of the year or the day with the most sunlight for this hemisphere. And of course, we're getting the 24. <laughs> so this transition into the day, uh, this uh, summer solstice date equaling 24 in the Chaldean cipher, again, absolutely amazing coming back to the number 24. And it also has some other important numbers. The 21 is, is, a, is an important number coming back to Saturn. And then you have that 65, which would be reverse 56, as above, so below, like we were talking about moments ago. And then if you were to add up the date as such, this date being the 24th or midsummer, you'd get 6 plus 24 plus 20 plus 21. And you're getting 71. And I think that's really interesting because if you were to copy full strawberry moon and type that into the Gematria calculator you're going to get 71 in Chaldean. So it's amazing to see how all of this comes together. Also, this 86 might be critical because of the tie to uh, Ripple, right, with the 86. But anyways, I think this is an important thing to consider how the next um, maybe five days before and after this next full moon could be a little bit, have a little bit of turmoil. Again, New World Order having the 174 and the 177, that would be uh, some days after we have the 177 date, and perhaps we could have some turbulence because of that as well. So anyways, let's move into the charts. Let's talk about Bitcoin dominance today. We're seeing Bitcoin dominance get about 46 read, and that could be something significant, especially because we're getting my main cross that I talk about here on this channel all the time, which is the 55 simple moving average getting crossed by the eight simple moving average and this cross is a bullish cross it's when the shorter term moving average gets above the longer term moving average in this case it's the eight above the 55 simple now this right here is a sign especially if we could break this previous high in the structure of 48 7 let's just call it 49 percent bitcoin dominance I would venture to say that if we get a daily close of Bitcoin dominance at 47, that would be the highest candle body close we've had since this downtrend started. And that could indicate some boring, bloody action for altcoins. It's again a very big reason why I focus so much on Bitcoin is not just because it's the main liquidity layer in this space, but it also is a very safe place to be during a bloodbath in the crypto market. So when cryptos are performing poorly or bearish, as some might say, Bitcoin is always the safest place to be. And it's it feels safest longest as well. So if you're somebody who has a hard stomach where like you can't you get really emotional and it's hard for you to like just like you're always looking at your portfolio getting sweaty. This is the type of person that needs to be in Bitcoin. Like, I don't care what you say about Three Gorges Dam or China Mining or any of that garbage. That's, first of all, theater, okay? Because we can see time and time again, whenever there's a big reversal in the market, Bitcoin's the safest. It's the best performing during when everything else is performing poorly. And then it outperforms the stock market, Forex, everything. Historically, since the creation of Bitcoin, it's outperformed everything on the market. It's funny, too, because I get a lot of people that talk about 
um, XRP and this conversation around Bitcoin. Now, this will be a quick rant, but if you go back into the Bitcoin chart in the first year, Bitcoin went from less than pennies to $30. Like, XRP hasn't even broke $3 for more than like a week. <laughs> and it's sitting around 80 cents again. So I get that people like to talk about fundamentals and use case and blah, 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 blah. But what's more important actually is to see that there's safety in this market and then there's gambling in this market. And if people are out there with 70 to 80% XRP portfolios, you're not feeling too good right now. And you're probably worried. Meanwhile, having a heavy Bitcoin portfolio, 50 to 60% Bitcoin, you're just kicking back and relaxing. So I think this last couple months has been will hopefully teach people who are newer to this space or anti-Bitcoin that being like that is, uh, it's, it's a sickness. It's like a mental illness to, to be afraid of something that has outperformed everything and then does really well when everything else is doing bad. Again, if there was a pullback tomorrow, the pullback will be way less for Bitcoin than everything else. So regardless of your feelings, it's probably better to, to just consider what I just said, because I've detached emotionally from all of these cryptos. I could care less what happens with them. I know who's running the show for all of them. It's the New World Order, the Jesuits, the Society, the Society of Jesus helps the Vatican, which is helped by CERN. It's all a big show and they don't care about you making money. That's why they, they move this market around really violently to get the retail investor out. And the retail investor has to do what smart money is doing, which is follow the money. You follow the money. Who's, who's mostly in this space? <laughs> They're not in XRP. They're not in Cardano. The institutional investors, the smart money, they are in Bitcoin. So you need to follow the money. You need to see what's going on over there. If you want to put 5% of your portfolio in something venture capital plays, that's totally fine. But I think a lot of the reason why everyone's so scared lately is because people are over leveraged in small cap altcoins and the altcoins that they have so much faith in, they keep putting their faith into the price. So when the price goes up, they feel like a genius. When the price goes down, they start crying and moaning about manipulation and this, that, and the third. When in reality, it's just because you didn't hedge your bets. You went all in on something based on somebody's YouTube videos where they sucked you into a cult. And now the only way to get out would be taking a loss or being wrong. I think that being wrong is a good feeling. When you've come to terms with being wrong about your investment, you learn so much. There's been so many experiences I've had throughout my journey of investing and increasing my financial acumen, my business acumen, where I had to admit that I was wrong. And just coming to terms with that helped me move forward and it helped me become more financially independent and financially stable. So just just saying that because I think this kind of idea might have some value to people during times like this. Anyways, Bitcoin dominance being at this 46 level, once I see a daily close above 47, I suspect it could actually run all the way up to this trend line, which is around 54. That would be in alignment with the 200 exponential, this green moving average. And there I would probably anticipate a rejection depending on how long this trend takes to get there. I mean, if we look from this trend line down to here at this bottom, from here about 40 days in the same direction, we're looking at late July. So that could be in the cards. And that would also make sense with my call of seeing a bigger pullback, not a new lower low for anything, but a pullback into the full moon of July. So if that is what occurs, that would make the most sense. And then if it breaks this trend line to the upside, full blown Bitcoin bull run leading into the end of the year. So with that being said, let's move on to the Bitcoin price chart, because that is very important what we're seeing right now. And they're getting a very bloody day in the market, but it's only bloody because there was options expiry. So options expired. As you can see, the stock market in and of itself is flat, literally flat. <clears throat> excuse me, the dollar index being flat, Dow 
S and P, Nasdaq, it's all flat. So there's really nothing to see here, guys. It's just a little red day. Um, not really a buying the dip sort of day unless you're looking to accumulate some really undervalued plays. But for the most part, Bitcoin is stealing the show right now, and uh, all eyes are on Bitcoin basically. So let's go to the the daily chart. A couple things that I think are important to look at. For one, we got our rejection. Let me uh turn all this stuff off. So we got our rejection right here at the 41,400. Again, a couple weeks ago, I told everyone until we get a daily close above 42,000, I wouldn't start partying just yet. That break above 42, that would be a full-blown trend reversal in my opinion. Right now, what we're seeing is just a back test of these previous prices where we were having a lot of trouble breaking. Now, could Bitcoin just roll over right now all the way down to 35,000? Of course. This market isn't ready to be making drastic moves just yet. I've said this time and time again since this pullback. Anticipate sideways boring price action until maybe even August. So what we need to consider here is a break of this level of 41,400 would most likely lead us to a continuation to the upside in terms of breaking all of the resistances that uh, are the short-term resistances. And then on the downside, anything below 34,700, that would be problem. That would just be another chop to the downside and we would need to see how support holds. The problem though, if Bitcoin breaks below 34,600, a lot of these altcoins are gonna take a shit. Like they're all probably gonna start creating lower lows. So as Bitcoin gains dominance and then also has weakness and structure, those that makes altcoins perform even worse. So just keep an eye out for that. Again, I'm not anticipating a move below this level until perhaps maybe July. Could we break it sooner? Of course, anything's possible in the matrix, but after me investigating options expiry moving into the end of the month, the odds are we're going to be holding this level between, you know, 40,000, 36,000 and chopping along it with wicks above and below. Okay? So, one other thing that I've been looking at if I go to the daily chart, pull up some of our EMAs, and I'm actually going to hide some other things don't really need our drawings. We can see that we're pretty much back testing the 21 EMA on the daily. That's pretty classic. Once you break above the 21, you pretty much always see a retest of the 21. So this is kind of par for the course. Another thing that we're um, gonna prove that there's a lot of heavy resistance ahead is this green moving average right here. It's the 200 exponential on the daily. That is gonna be the main level to get a daily close above. So even a daily close above 41,200 would indicate that we're probably going to head to the upside. And that would, you know, that's basically just reiterating what I just said a little bit earlier about breaking this previous high in the structure. It's just a higher high. Higher highs equal trend reversals. Lower highs, sorry, higher lows are a sign of strength and that we're continuing to push to the upside as well. With all of these moving averages, the 21, the 13, and the eight simple all coiling up below right here at 38 that's a very strong sign of support at that level so i would be confident to assume that we hold this level for today's daily close and then we perhaps have a nice uh, little rebound throughout the next um week or so but i i am weary with the full moon i am weary with the information that i provided at the beginning of this video using that gamatria decode of the 174th day of the year so that would be 24th and that gives us about eight trading days to see how this plays could we stay choppy and sideways for eight days a hundred percent so just got to see how it goes. Let me move on to XRP and then wrap up this video. So with XRP, we're in sort of a precarious place because the price action is coiling up. And the way I could show you that is with the Bollinger Bands. So you can see with the Bollinger Bands, they're getting extremely tight. Now, we are seeing heavy rejection on this, this uh, median line of the Bollinger Bands, which is the 20 simple. Now, that's a problem right? That's showing a sign of weakness. And we're also seeing that it keeps trending with high, uh, lower highs. Lower highs is bad. So 
this is doing worse than most altcoins right now. And I think that's a conversation to be had. If we go over to the four hour chart, you can see this is really coiling up. Like, holy shit, this is really getting tight. So we could use the four hour chart to assume a four hour close above the top side band around 91 cents would probably lead to continuation to the upside. On the other end, it's not looking so good on the downside band because we keep testing it. So this is really strange. Um, XRP again underperforming during a time when you would in, you would expect things to, to perhaps be bought up at these lower prices. You heard me say it a month ago. If we break two bucks or a dollar fifty, doesn't really matter. The pump and dump is still in play. That's pretty much what XRP does. So here's the thing, right? If Bitcoin moves bullish, we would probably see a break of this structure and move up to a dollar twenty, a dollar thirty would be possible, and I think it would happen pretty fast. But what I believe that's going to be a sign of is a bull trap. I've told everyone about this bull trap idea for weeks now, maybe even a month. And it's something we would have to pay attention to with a break above the 120 price for XRP. We're most likely capable of coming up into this region right here. I'll show you the two week Bollinger Band. And that's where I think we'll get stopped out right there about 133, 130. Yeah, 133. I would, I would suspect if we do pump to the upside, it would probably be getting a rejection at the top side Bollinger Band of the two week the bi-weekly chart. And on the downside, this is where we have problems. The downside, we would come back to a double bottom, which would be around right here, a 65 cent. And if that 60 or 70 cent level cannot hold, we would have a lower low. And that lower low would indicate a move down to the POC, which I would suspect if we move on the daily, it would be around 45 cents. Yeah, so right around 47 cents is where we would anticipate the move down to. 46, 47 cents. That's what I would that's what I would anticipate. And that would be a full blown re uh like <laughs> that'd be a re a reset. That would mean that we just completely pumped and dumped right back to where we started. So if that's the case, it's another reason why you guys have been hearing me back then talk about removing my initial investment into XRP and reallocating it into Theta because I was more bullish on Theta and I still am. And with this sort of price action, it's confirming that why is XRP sitting at support level of 80 cents while Bitcoin is at 38,000? Note, when Bitcoin was trading at lower levels, I mean, it's just proof that this coin needs to be bought up by sophisticated money, and it isn't. It's being held by very, very weak hands, and um, yep, I think that, again, it reiterates things that I've been saying in live streams when you guys ask me about XRP. I tell you, I do not anticipate new highs on XRP until the end of the year when the bull run for Bitcoin is pretty much over. Between now and then, it's pumpy and dumpy, and you just have to be okay with that. It's accumulation for me, though. If we break this 80, uh, if we break down, I will be buying again because it's just too undervalued, too undervalued in a bull run. Now, if Bitcoin starts to break below 30K, that's a sign of like, hey, we should be considering that this might not be the same bull run that we're used to um, doing analysis on, and we would have to go back to the drawing board. But for now, Bitcoin's looking really strong. It's sucking away life from the altcoins. It just so happens that XRP is a very underperforming altcoin, and I'm ready for an explosive move at any time. Be the title of this video. And I'm not saying that because I believe it'll go up or down. It's just, it has to make a choice. It's coiling up in this area. And whenever anything like this coils up and becomes very, very stagnant, Bollinger Bands start constricting. That's a sign of get ready. Shit's about to pop off. So be careful out there, wolves. Appreciate all of you. Again, Patreon's open. <clears throat> Patreon.com slash waters above. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Hopefully be doing a live stream this Friday. Planning on doing one at every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Enjoy the rest of your day in the Matrix. Much love.